Hello and welcome to the Ghost Quarter. So you're probably wondering, where do I start with stamp collecting? It's pretty easy actually. Go out, buy yourself a collection of 400 stamps or more, and then go through it until you find something that interests you. It really is not that complicated. I spend typically about four to six dollars, including shipping, on stamps and then go through them. It's not like I'm spending a hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, six thousand dollars. No, I'm not spending that kind of money. It's stamps for God's sake. Uh, use stamps from anywhere from the 1800s to present day. Uh, you never know what you're going to get in a collection like that and you will find something you find interesting. That's where you start. For me, I, I was lucky. I I had the weirdest way you could get interested in philately. I found this antique. I found this antique book from 1938. It's a Scots stamp uh, standard postage stamp catalog intended to tell you about old stamps, which at the time was present day. Nowadays, it's old stamps. But I got lucky. I found out I wanted to do Egyptian stamps. That's what I wanted to do. So I was lucky when I started. But there's a lot of people out there that are brand new, have never done philately before, or don't know where to get started with uh, philately, and I'm making this video to help you. And I've been doing my homework. I'm by no means an expert. I'm slowly trying to become an expert on Egyptian stamps, but I'm not an expert. So use this as a guide, not a rule. All right, so I'm gonna give you an overview of some of the most commonly used things for your collection, um, which this is not all inclusive, mostly because there are these envelopes here which are really, really cheap. You can find them on almost any major website that deals in stamps. I just, for the life of me, can't remember what these are called right now. Um, I'll make an updated video at a later time with more information, but I'm trying to get this video done so that it can get up and people start getting interested and they start having a clue where to start because nobody's done this on YouTube. Literally, nobody has sat down and said, this is a, a, a HECO dealer card. This is intended for dealers to display their stamps, you know, but the good part about it is not only is it good for displaying stamps, it's also good for the person who wants to store their stamps, maybe not necessarily permanently in these, but for the small time person such as myself, this isn't a bad solution for starting out. Um, mostly because your stamps are safe, you can look at them without damage and well, damaging them and it's a good plan. I don't have any of the, the stamp pages right now, but my solution for the long-term storage is probably going to be either the black lighthouse pages or the clear lighthouse pages. And Graham Steffens, I believe his name is, he has his own channel uh, about postal things, you know, postage, postal, you know, whatnot. I'll link him down below. But anyway, um, he was suggesting using the clear uh, lighthouse pages. And the reason for it was he could then, you know, turn the page and you would see the front and the back. Whereas with this, you can see the front, but you can't see the back. And that was a point that actually stuck with me. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. We can work with that and that's what I'm doing. So anyway, um, you have the HECO light, the, sorry, the HECO style 102B uh, of these. Now, what's that 102B mean? Well, the 102B means that it's a black background uh, as opposed to a white background. So you can buy either or and they'll be perfectly fine for your stamps to my understanding, but they won't look the same. Uh, if you buy the 102A, I believe that's the one with the white background. If you buy the 102B, that's the one with the black background. And I don't think either one of them are going to damage your stamps because these are specifically made to hold stamps. And I'm pretty confident that 
if a dealer bought these and then you know their stamp suddenly started to degrade inside of a you know holder intended form they might get a little bit pissed off and i can't necessarily blame them so yeah anyway my two solutions for storage is a heco heco dealer cards or lighthouse post page well lighthouse um, stamp pages or album pages, excuse me, Lighthouse album pages. Um, either one of those two will get you on eBay and getting you in the right direction of what you need for storing your stamps. My opinion, uh, small collections or if you want, if you have a valuable stamp that you just want to, you know, go, okay, I want to take this to a dealer, I want to sell it, I want to get my money out of it. Might be a good idea to put it in this because once you get it in here, just don't take it out. If you're planning on selling it, just take it to them. You can write all the information down of what you think it is, and there you go. Uh, also, these are good for selling on eBay if you're a reseller, because just about every single thing that I buy that's a single stamp comes in one of these. So it's good for shipping purposes as well. So my feeling on the entire matter is what you want to do is figure out what you're trying to do. Are you trying to build a album, a fill an album with stamps that you just find interesting? Are you trying to do something topical, which for those of you who don't know, topical means like, for example, I'm trying to collect every Egyptian stamp pre-1945. That's kind of topical, but... What's really topical is when you're trying to collect all the stamps that have castles on them, or you're trying to collect all the Olympic stamps, the, anything that has the, uh, the rings on it of the Olympics, or you're trying to collect all the, uh, all the knight stamps, any stamp that has a knight on it. Basically, what, the, what topical means is not like in terms of, you know... Oh, that's so political right now. Hillary Clinton? Ah, oh, yeah, I know who that is. 20 years from now. Who's Hillary Clinton? That's topical. Not the topical I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is you're picking a topic and then collecting those stamps from that topic. And that's where people typically start out. For me, if I wasn't doing Egypt right now, I would probably be doing airmail issues because I find that the airmail issues are some of the most interesting stamps that you can get your hands on. And I like these. These are cool. They're neat. Um, now, you would think this stamp being from 1933, this stamp would be worth, you know, a ridiculous amount of money. Surprisingly, no. That stamp is worth about a dollar. I paid a dollar plus... Uh, $3 shipping from Egypt to get that from Egypt all the way to my front door. So yeah, um, not necessarily that expensive to buy old stamps, depending on the stamp you buy. Now, that said, an old stamp from America in America is probably going to cost you more than buying a foreign stamp from Germany, China, Egypt, because there's not as many collectors here. There's not a high demand for that. 